Hi nerds, check out my Gage 1 Thomas model based on the TV series Thomas and Friends. So my son's around 18 months old and loves watching Thomas and I have a 3D printer and a Gage 1 garden train set so I figured why not cut up Thomas for him to play with. I eventually plan to build a decent set from Sodor because I've been on the internet and I just can't get them in this gauge, which incidentally is the gauge used for the first televised Thomas and Friends series, which was voiced by Ringo Starr. So first, I had a look online to see if anyone else had made one, and there's a fair few renders out there, so I had some reference models to work off. But because I wanted to build a moving engine with an electric motor based around this standard Pico engine block, I figured it would be easy to redraw it. Also, this has the advantage that I can print it in subsections designed to reduce the material weight on supports and the time spent festering and sanding supports off the finished model, which is always a pain in the ass. So for example, I've sliced the engine base into two halves, so I can print them on the side, hence no need for support material, then just glue them together. I can also print the cylinder on its nose, which removes the need for support, the dome and chimney was simply glued in afterwards. I've reinforced it internally when required with hot glue. This is primarily because 3D prints are not known for their strength, and my son playing with it will need to be able to withstand a bit of force. So the crude composite of the two plastics means it's slightly more flexible, and if a part does break off, it will most likely fracture the PLA and remain attached by the hot glue. So my dad recommended uh, using a nail file, he's a seasoned modeler, to smooth off some of the um, 3D printed uh, edges, which has had mixed results. Uh, I've used a little bit on the top here, but now I have the dome and the chimney, which I printed out individually, um, as to reduce the amount of support needed during printing. And I was having trouble printing a larger volume in my tiny little printer, because this thing is bigger than the printer now. Um, so because I've got these little burrs here that I'm going to need to fill, I've got Milliput two-part modelling epoxy, which I'm just going to use as a little bit of filler. And hopefully on the top as well, I might be able to take out some of these additional runs. Originally, I wanted to design the complete motor mount such that I could use a standard double-O motor configuration, because they're much more common, but this proved very difficult with the surprising amount of torque required to move the model. I've had repeated motor failures trying to make this gearbox actually work. I replaced it with a pre-mode motor from Worm Gear Assembly. This also failed. Eventually, I designed a working gearbox, which I'll show in another video, which allowed it to function properly. After this, I hand-painted the model and then used my wife's cry cut, or cricket. I cut the decals for the numbers and red lines, which was probably the hardest part of the build, apart from the gearbox assembly. Um, because compared to Fusion 360, the cry cut software is terrible, and the decals are really difficult to actually line up. So that was a genuine challenge. The control system is simple H-Bridge using an ESP32 to control it. This is connected to my phone via Bluetooth and is exactly the same as the RC Connects car in my previous video. So like and subscribe if you want to see more toys being made badly by me and broken by him. Thanks for watching. Enjoy. Fucking bloody work.